Hey, what's going on, Cloud Scholars? I hope your day is going well. I'm your host, Kieran Tross. I want to say welcome back. And for anyone who is this is your first time visiting, I want to give you a special welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about conditional access insights and reporting and show you exactly how you navigate through this section within Microsoft's major Azure system. So why would you want to use uh, conditional access insights and reporting? So I, I'm pretty sure you understand conditional access because that's probably why you're here. But you're probably looking at and saying, hey, I've seen this icon here, this insights and reporting, and I'm not really sure exactly what that's supposed to do. And you, then you probably read through the Microsoft Docs and you were kind of confused, which is fine. So that's why you're here. So conditional access and reporting enables you to understand the impact of the conditional access policies within your organization. So you'll get to understand exactly how users are signing in, where they're signing in, and then what conditions are being applied to those sign in, if any conditions are being applied at all. The great thing about conditional access insights and reporting, it allows you to forecast what's going on in your organization so that this way you can make educated uh, responses and you have creative ways to structure your organization so that you have you allow users to sign in but also keep data safe at the same time so before we jump into that we always have to do it prerequisites in order for us to be able to use this uh functionality so what are the prerequisites to enable the insights and report and workbook your tenant must have a log analytics workspace to retain signing logs data Users must have an Azure AD Premium 1 or 2 license to use conditional access. So these are the following roles that can access uh, insights and reporting. Conditional access administrator, security reader, security administrator, global reader, and obviously we're talking about going God mode, global administrator. Then in order to use uh, the following log analytics workspace, you have to have the roles of contributor or owner. So in order for us to be able to pull the information in and use in, uh, insights, you have to set up your diagnostic settings to go into that workspace. So let's jump in and make sure we know exactly what we're doing there. So I'm back at the Azure portal and I'm in Microsoft Azure Active Directory. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to diagnostic settings. Within diagnostic settings, I have one already set up and I had to do it this way um, because it was the only way I would be able to show you the information and kind of log in over a set period of time so I can now show you exactly what we're going to look at. Now, I do have a video about how to set up a workspace and send information over, but I'll kind of go through it really quickly with you in this video. So I'm going to go to edit. If it's new to you, you're going to click on new. And then what you're going to do is you're, you need to uh, make sure that your workspace is has audit logs, sign-in logs, and service principal sign-in logs. Uh, you can get away with these two. This one, Azure is going to say, hey, you know, you need to have service principal sign-in logs and give you a warning, but you can still make it work. And then you want to send it to your log analytics workspace, which it would fall under whatever subscription you want it to, and then you would have it to your log analytics workspace. But make sure that you create your log analytics workspace before you even get to this point. All right, so now let's go back over to our conditional access policies. And let's go into insights and reporting. So what we're going to look at is how we are able to read and modify the data that's going to come in insights and reporting. So first, in order for me to show you this lab, I had to create it. So let's talk about the users that we're going to be looking at. So one of the conditional access policies that I created was a conditional access policy that is for MFA finance. And this conditional access policy is already turned on. And what it does is it grants, it allows access into the Azure portal for all apps. And it's targeted the finance group. And within the finance group, we have two users, Hillary Banks and we have Beetlejuice. Both are in the finance group. So they're gonna only get access if they MFA um, into uh, uh, their um, app so that this way that they can get into the portal or whatever um, application they want within our Microsoft ecosystem. Then we have another conditional access policy. This one now is for our purchasing group. 
And as you can see in the top, it says uh, it's purchasing is the name of the uh, conditional access policy and it's in report only mode. Now I wanted to show you the difference of a conditional access policy that's turned on and a conditional access policy that's in report only mode. Some of you may not have used report only mode and don't understand exactly why you want to set things up with report only mode, but I'll get into explaining that later on in this video. This one now, once we're able to say, okay, we understand how this uh, policy is working, we're going to not, when it comes to that grant section within the conditional access policy, we're going to block access. That's what we want to do for this one. And the targeted group is the purchasing group. And we have Dennis Menace. That is who we're going to block because he is just doing too much. So let's jump back over to the Azure portal and I will explain in further detail what we're going to do. Okay, so we're back at the Azure portal. And one thing I want to talk to you about is uh, these parameters that we're going to go and read through. So we have certain parameters in here. Um, and let me take a step back. See this uh, exclamation mark right here? It says, in order to view service principal sign-ins, ensure that dog diagnostic settings are configured to send service principal sign-in logs to your log analytics workspace. So I turned that on. Uh, a few hours ago, this message is still populating in this warning. Uh, hopefully it goes away, but it's not going to stop us or prevent us from understanding uh, what's going on in our environment. So we don't have to worry about it. So the first thing we're going to go is conditional access policies. Over here, by default, it's going to first say all enabled policies and it's going to do everything. What you can do is you can say, all right, in this section right here, it br pretty much breaks it down into uh, two groups, right? So it's enabled and report only policies. By default, all enabled policies are selected. These enabled policies are the policies currently enforced in your tenant. Then we have an option to say, okay, let's do a time range. Let's see what's going on within the last four hours, 12 hours, so on and so forth. Entirely up to you. Then you can go by all users, all apps, and data views by users. The next section is called the impact summary. Basically what this is, is summarizing everything that's going on in your environment. Now these numbers are small, but for your environment, you may have some massive numbers like 800 and something, 12,000, 15,000, depending on the organization. So this is saying total number of users, then this is saying success number of users uh, which are uh, where the selected policies, grant access and required controls were satisfied. And then it says failure where number of users where the selected policies denied access and the required controls were not satisfied. This is a section you really want to pay attention to because you're like, OK, let me see what's going on here and who's trying to hack in. And then there's user action required number of users where the selected report only policy applied, but users actions would be required if the policies were enabled. And then there's the not applied right here. This is, hey, nobody is there logging in, but they just don't have a conditional access policy associated with them. So let's go down a little bit further down here. You'll see that we have device total. Uh, we have 100% unmanaged because <laughs> uh, we're not connected to any kind of Intune or anything like that, or I should say Endpoint Manager or whatever Microsoft's calling it these days. And then right here is Device Platform. As you can see right here, it's Mac OS and then OS X. So it's just letting us know exactly what device platform we're coming from. Uh, client apps as well, and then sign in risk as well. So down here is what I really want to pay attention to. This little map here lets you know, hey, where our organization is and who's signing in from where. So as you can see, it's everywhere within the ECUS. If you're following along on your screen and you're looking into your organization, you're probably seeing so many more red dots or, and green dots all over the place. And basically, this lets you know exactly where your users are signing into. So if your company is in the U.S. and you're seeing all the sign-ins here, and then all of a sudden you see a sign-in somewhere in this region, you're like, okay, what's going on there? And you're seeing failures. Um, if you don't have business in that country, uh, to me, it makes sense to just say, all right, let me block that country. Now, that is totally up to you. You make the decision at the end of the day. But it's probably one of the best things that you can do if you don't need to have access there, then just block it. And I'm going to go into that as well. So we come over here to name locations after we're able to look at this. 
we could come to name locations and say, all right, we have an understanding of our environment. We see exactly where our users are coming in from. Let's go ahead and let's go to our country's location. And what we'll do is say blocked locations. And once you go into blocked locations, you can now pick off the countries, and I'm just clicking along, that you want to block. Because you're like, all right, we don't do any business in Belize, Belgium, all these other places, and you can click create. Once you go ahead and click create, you can now have a conditional access policy that says, hey, all applications, and you can go and say, I'm going to block all applications from these, these um, locations, and, and it would be called your block locations, and you will prevent anyone from signing in from those locations. Now, I'm pretty sure somebody's thinking, well, what if they just VPN into the United States? You know, they'll be able to get in which is absolutely right, they can do that. But what I would say is, you're always trying to put some kind of parameter to make it harder for hackers. So that's one thing that you can do, I just wanted to point that out as well. So if we go a little bit further down, we could come here to sign in details. And basically we could get more granular with, with our information. So one thing I would say is, you have all these different uh, users here and it will let you know the user principal and you can see the count uh, when they signed in so you can either come up here and then type in the name so if i did hillary it would just leave it as hillary or i could have just literally just clicked on hillary right here and on this side you're going to see the sign-ins so here it says hillary banks it says you know app display name office home i logged into portal.office and over here the rest of them was portal.azure and you can see it says success success some were failures uh, success as well and so on and so forth for conditional access status if I come back over here and I click Dennis Dennis the Menace Dennis dot Menace um, remember he was in report only so if we come over here now we can see conditional access status is not applied it's not applied at all because it's in report only mode so uh, just want to point that out to you so you can see exactly how the logs will populate for you and then we have Beetlejuice Beetlejuice was in our MFA as well in the PowerPoint deck. You saw that uh, Beetlejuice was there and you can see success, success, and you can see the different um, areas and times when Beetlejuice was able to sign in. So this is what's good about uh, insight and reporting. Uh, it's really good for you just to get an understanding of how you can navigate through it. Obviously, this is a lab, so you're not seeing so much of, of the impact by it. But, you know, I, I always agree with, hey, if you can get a foundational understanding when it comes to more complex things, then you're able to digest that much easier because you were able to get it from a simplistic standpoint. But I do want to show you something else, which is outside of the insights and reporting. So if we were to come here and I would say, let's go to Azure Active Directory, and I were to go down here to sign in logs, this is just another area where you can see what's going on and you can see exactly what conditions are being prevented from a user. So let's just say if you're having a user that's having an issue and they're like, hey, you know, I'm having some issues logging in and you guys enabled a new policy, but hopefully you did one policy at a time. But, you know, you got that one IT guy that wants to do like three things at once. You're like, all right, what is going on? What's being affected by this specific user? You could come into sign in logs and you can say, okay, let's go to Hillary Banks. You could click on Hillary Banks and you can see status was successful, but let's just say if it was a failure, you could come over here to conditional access and you can see which conditional access is being applied to the user. See, before it just said in Insights Report, it was saying success. Over here, we're saying, okay, policy name, MFA finance, and it will give you the different policies in your organization. And you can see this is success and this one says not applied. So you know she's not being affected by this policy, but this one is um, affecting her. Then if we go down to Beetlejuice, we can go and take a look and we can see success here, not applied. But let's check out Dennis the Menace. You see Dennis the Menace, remember he was in report only mode. So you can see here, not applied, not applied. But if we come to this tab right over here, we can see that purchasing MFA is supposed to block, but you see right here it says result, report only failure. So it's letting you know exactly what's going on. There's more information here that you could kind of go through if you want to, and you could take a look and you could see exactly where people are signing in from. Um, 
and it gives you all that good stuff right so um just so you know this is pretty much um uh, where you can take a look and see what's going on in conditional access policies uh just an fyi so you just get an understanding of what's going on there um for your sign-ins so that's pretty much it i just wanted to make a quick video just to talk about uh conditional access policies um with insights and reporting and then also give you a, a freebie with this whole sign-in logs as well within microsoft azure so i hope you found the information in this video to be valuable and hopefully it helped you out and that's why you came to this page um, here at cloud scholars um, I, I want to thank you for coming and spending the time here with me um, as always my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert thank you see you next time